Hey everybody, it's Gordon. Welcome to the bench. Today I'm working on Stanley number two knobs. We've got some hairline fractures down at the foot. I'm gonna show you how to address that without screwing up that bead and without messing up that patina. Stick around. So here's our rosewood knob, pretty standard uh, fractures along the bottom, little hairline cracks. If we leave these unattended, they'll go from bad to worse. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, inject epoxy and we're going to then put it in a little fixture and hold on to it. The goal here would be to keep the original patina, keep the bead and make the base perfectly round. As you can see, it's not round with the little leaflet sticking out. So what I do is I just put a scrap piece of wood in the lathe, I'll bore a diameter, a cylinder with a Forstner bit and that's gonna be smaller than the, the base of the knob. Then I'm gonna use turning tools and put a little taper on it, and that'll allow us to make uh, a little snap fit. Here I am gonna test the fit. I'm just winging it, really. I don't measure anything. I'm gonna do everything custom fit. Once you get that conical shape and you've got a little bit of a taper and it feels like it's got a good squeeze, I'll go ahead and sand it um, to take some of the, the roughness out of it. We're not gonna invest a ton of time in our one-time fixture here, but sanding does help. Put a slight little thin coat of uh, paste wax on that. And then I go ahead and with a, again, with another beading tool, I'll put a little collar on the inside and that gives me a snap fit. So now I know it's squeezed, I know it's round, and we're good to go. And we're ready for glue up. So for this project, of course, we're gonna use a System 3 G2. That is a Epoxy, it's a two-part epoxy for oily woods. I'm not gonna be able to get inside um, and clean this out like I normally do, but we're gonna open it up for sure. And then we're gonna insert G2, make sure that we get, a, get a, a good distribution, and then we've got our little fixture. So the plan would be, I have a conical shape, I just turn this on my lathe, and I'm gonna press this on and give it a little twist. And what that's gonna do is radially, it's gonna open these cracks up for me. And that way I'm not uh, gonna pop one of those off. So I take it nice and slow. It's just kind of uh, using it as a fixture. We'll open this up. Then uh, we'll be able to apply a thin coating on the inside as well. And then we're gonna to go to this fixture, which is the inverse of this cone. It's also conical, but it's tapered. And what I'm gonna do is press it into the, the funnel, if you will, or this conical shape. I put just a slight amount, a little touch of uh, paste wax on there to help with the twist. And then I also do just a little bitty relief down toward the end, which gives it kind of a pop. And that way I know I'm seated, I'm round. Because this is turned on a lathe, I'm, ins I'm assured that it's round and that's gonna then set and be our, our finished product. So here we go. See, this is the G2, it's a two to one ratio. And that's a two part resin to one part hardener. You've heard me say this before, more hardener is not more better. It's not gonna make it uh, stronger or make it set faster. It's actually gonna cause problems. So stay with your manufacturer's recommendations one is clear, one has a slight tint to it. This assures me that I get a good mix. I'm well blended. I don't put any tint or color in until after I've mixed my epoxy, okay? If I threw in my brown now, I wouldn't really be able to take full benefit of making sure this is mixed well. Okay, looks really good. So now I'm gonna use trans tint product and this is something that I find um, just a phenomenal product that I don't know what else to say but it's a, a dye solution just a pin drop is all I'm gonna need and in this case I'm using the Cordovan the number 6007 it's got a little bit of a red tint to it it's a little bit of a it's not just brown brown and it's not black um, and again these tight these cracks are gonna be so tight and this is such a small part um, color isn't really going to matter, right? I, I really don't think so, but I just color my epoxy. It's a fairly consistent practice that I use. So here's how I do this. Again, just for distribution, I just touch it to the side. 
that's way more than we need. And then I tip my little cup up and just bring in a pin drop. Bring it in and mix it up a little bit. I'm not sure you can see that. Let's come over here. I see the quarterman color. It's like a maroon. And that's really all I wanted was just a pin drop. So I got way too much tint in there, which is a compliment to the folks at TransTint. I absolutely love this product. I'll put a link in my video. A nice, rich, burgundy color. It's like kind of a deep quarter band. Love it. Okay. So now, I'm going to kind of hug up here. What we're going to do... So I just put a real thin coat of paste wax on this. That'll help us with our process. And... Again, I'm going to just push this on. You can see, hopefully, you can see those uh, joints open up. Let me kind of readjust here. There we go. Okay. So on the cone, spread them all out. You can see they're a little, little bit loose. It's got kind of a fan feel to it. Now I need to squeeze this all the way around. I want it to be round. So being turned on the lathe, it's perfectly round and it's gonna have a seat in the bottom with a little click. So I'm gonna be able to lock it in and we're good to go. I put uh, paste wax in there just to help with the release. Let's give it a little thumpity thump. I think we're there. That's there. Let her dry. So coming out of the mold, you're going to see a little bit of squeeze out, and this will be on those vertical lines where we had a, a crack. I've, in, I've injected the epoxy with a syringe, a fine needle, and then I expect to see some overflow like this. And it doesn't really bond inside the mold, but I'll go ahead and take a razor blade and knock this off. Then I'll go back on the inside diameter and paint the entire thing with epoxy again. Once I've done that, then I have a, a little bit more of a jagged edge on the inside and I really do have a surface that I want to clean up. So I just use a Dremel tool. Um, I'm not going to try and do the inside diameter with a file. That's difficult and it really doesn't show. So I'll go ahead and just clean it up and then I'll add a little uh, chamfer on the inside too. And that's what you see right here. I'm just doing this all by hand. Just kind of feather it in so the inside and the bottom looks really good. Um, and then I'll go back and do the outside. What really matters to me, what's visible. Okay, so at this point, I'm using magnification, and I use a series of jeweler's files, and what I'm doing is just taking my epoxy line off and working it really fine. Rather than put this on the lathe and spin it and alter the patina and alter the shape, I really just need to get under the, um, you know, the adhesive and then kind of level it back out. I'm trying to make that joint go away. So this is really how I end up doing it, and a lot of freehand work. This file, as small as it is, under 10x or 15x, kind of looks like a snow shovel on a sidewalk. It's really easy to see and really easy to get detail. So this is what I do. And then I do use um, a syringe if I have to. I can tip it epoxy and fill in any little void. If I have an air bubble or something that I missed, I'll go back in and touch that up too. So I wish I had a way to um, show you what I'm doing up close and get in there, but this is about the next 30 minutes or 20 minutes of detail. And um, just trying to get on in with a jeweler's file and clean that off. And then um, after that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll put it on a stick and, and we'll spray it and see what it looks like. And our finished product here, which is three coats of lacquer with a four aught steel wool in between and a final coat of paste wax on top. Original patina, the original bead is still there, but the product itself is stable. So we've addressed those fractures along the bottom, put a coating of uh, epoxy on the inside as well, which will help secure it and keep it all in one piece. So I like the way this one turned out. I hope that you did too, and I hope you learned something, little tips and tricks along the way. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, stick around. See you guys next time.